Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode 440 at scavengerlife.com. We had a pretty good week on eBay. Oh really? It slowed down yesterday. True, but it didn't feel good. I felt like a lot of stuff was selling, especially earlier in the week. Yeah. You know, days were like something selling like every hour, every couple hours. It was always like that. I know, right? I wish. But it did feel good. And I will say... That has been true for us ever since we've been selling on eBay. It's just this, it really is like a dopamine effect where you hear that cha-ching on your phone or you wake up. And there's all these sales. And there's all these sales. It's so nice. All these $30 sales. <laughs> yeah. There's some high, there were some high sales yeah. this week. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very I, pessimistic. You can tell. I am a little more positive. Since, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's better than what, what we have been having. And for me also, there's the extra dopamine that gets put on because we do sell such random stuff. Yes. Oh my God. When I look and see stuff that's selling and it's like <laughs> the weirdest stuff, I'm like, I can't believe it. And that, some of so. it's old. You're like, I never, I never thought that would yeah. sell. I mean, not really. I obviously got it because I thought it would sell, but you're like, it I was actually, waiting right. for it to it happen. Actually sold. Yeah. And that's probably maybe a different experience than people who are putting a lot more time into finding items that they know people really do want. Yeah. Um, and in those sell, you're like, oh, of course they sell because I like put all this time into like finding highly sought after items. Yeah. We are not doing that. We're finding <laughs> things that are just inexpensive to buy. But interesting. I mean, it has to be at least interesting. We're sure. not like, what's garbage? What can I buy? But I'm like, there's somebody out there that might want this. Weird one thing. out of a million people want this thing. And one out of a billion. And. You know, it's interesting. There was uh, a new person that came on our forum, introduced himself, and, you know, uh, he says, you know, he's not going to quit his job to try and do this full time, just trying to get, like, an extra yeah. income. I will not say hustle because if you're doing this, it's a business. Um, the side hustle. Yeah, it's a business, you know, so take yourself yeah, seriously. Yeah, it's a uh, business. And, you know, he was asking questions like, how much money should I invest in this? And how much money should I, am, am I allowed to pull out of my business? I guess the idea is, you know, as he's selling things, how much of that should he put back into like buying more inventory? Right. And it was interesting, the group, and I, and, and I agree with this, we were all trying to counsel him on, that's not a bad question, but maybe don't think about that first. Think about more. Make sure you're laying down the good groundwork of so you can consistently put items up and store them and ship them. Get a system down. Yeah. You gotta have a system down first before you start thinking about how much money you're gonna start pulling out. I mean, it's okay to think about those things, but it's good to just get going and start and then realize what makes sense. Well, I, you mean, know what I mean I would even say the first couple of 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 months, just sell stuff around started. your house, yeah. or maybe you, you went to a, a a yard sale and got a box of stuff. Yeah, I mean, just first, just focus on getting a system down that makes sense to you. Yeah, to see number one if you enjoy doing this. Yeah, and number two, can you do that on a consistent basis? Right, because you know it's one thing to be like a really pumped and excited and do it one Saturday. Can you do it all the time? Every, every day, Saturday? Every, every Can you do week, it yeah. after work? Right. You know? Uh, because if you don't have that basis down, then you're going to burn out pretty quick because there are going to be slow weeks, especially if you have items under 500 items in your inventory. There might be weeks where you only sell two things, you know? And you'd be surprised also, like, just how things change when you start and when you have gotten started. Like, you might think it's going to be one way and then, you know, you realize, oh, actually, instead of like, whatever, reinvesting as much into the business, you know, X amount of dollars, I actually want to save this money to pay my mortgage or I want to save it for my kid's college fund. Like, you're going to come up with things that make more sense as time go by, uh, as time goes by. And I've seen this with other people that I know who have started businesses. And we do this sometimes. Where you have this idea of things and you're like, oh, I'm really excited for this and I'm going to start doing, like I have a friend who wanted to start a restaurant and she started, this is in the beginning, she didn't have a building, she didn't have a chef, she, she, she had nothing. She was buying the silverware for her restaurant. She had a dream. 
I mean, you're like, okay, I get it. Like, that's the fun part, but that's the part that gets done at the end when right. you're like, we're opening. I'm ordering the silverware. This was like, you know, years before she could even get to that point. She was a f- ahead of herself. She's ahead of herself. So I'm not saying don't do those numbers or think about that, but it's like, that can happen, yeah. you know, anyway. Right. That's I mean, my, that's my, right. I mean, I think, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's kind of like, first, like try and sell 10 things without any expectations. Like, See if you can start. sell. So that way you're testing out. Are you actually finding things that people want? Are your items that you're putting in your eBay store, are they good? Yeah. yeah. Photos good. Are people asking you, uh, the same it's question over and over again, meaning maybe I need to put an extra right. picture on something. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, do you enjoy that? Right. When someone buys something, do you know how to ship it without just going to the post office and paying the person? Like, can you print a label? And right, right, right. Find the most efficient way to ship it. And then when it gets to the person, can you handle customer service? Because that's going to happen. Yeah. Flaky buyers. Right. Grumpy All buyers. Without going into a rage, you know, <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. hard. So those, those buyers that buy something and immediately cancel, those are yeah. fun. I mean, because I think that that's what we try and advocate in this community on this podcast is like this is the long game. Yeah. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. And I know there yeah. are other uh, YouTube channels that focus more on just go to Goodwill, get a carload of stuff you just made five thousand look at you <laughs> you're uh, a millionaire and if that doesn't work out well you can actually buy this program that i made <laughs> yes so i don't know there's no secret here it's just really kind yeah. of it's all those little details that are a part of a process that only you can figure out on your own look i i took a class a couple of months ago and um, it pertained to the new business we're going to open. And I was asking a bunch of questions as you do when you're in a class. And my teacher consistently was like, it depends. Right. And you're like, no, but I want the answer. I want like, what's the answer that you have as a 25 year expert? What's the answer? And he would literally always be like, it depends. Yeah. And I understand that from, from these businesses that we run, Airbnb, eBay, our video business, Somebody asked me the other day, how much, do, this is crazy, how much does it cost to produce a video? Right. And I was like, they, like, so many, I mean, I have to, in order for me to give you a slight, even close answer, I have to ask you like 20 questions. A series of questions. Yeah, right. like, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Like, how many people are working on it? It depends. Yeah. So, same. Sorry, I'm cooking rice, everybody. So it depends, you know, yeah. and that's the, that it's a, it's like the worst answer, but it's like the most truthful answer. It's the honest answer. It just depends right? on this, 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 yeah. this, 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 this. And the good thing is in our forum, you know, every week when we post a podcast, people will post their uh, numbers. Not everybody, but those who feel yeah. comfortable enough to share, they'll show how many items are in their store, how many. How many items they sold? How yeah. much money they Some made? Some people that have week. really detailed numbers, and you know that's a good place to be too because you will see someone like us having like eight thousand items in, in, in our store. We may make the same as someone with a thousand items in their store that week. Yep, and totally. Those are good places to start asking questions. Why is this person making as much as we are? You know, they probably are finding different kinds of stuff. <laughs> Sorry, my cat is being... Uh, hey, everyone's so being noisy very, today. Jeez. Being very... Uh, uh, it's needy. So all of those things are also part of the equation as well. I mean, right... I mean, there, there are questions I have when I see, you know, someone like the Seam Store. This guy who's on our forum all the time. I mean, his numbers are out of control. He's and making I'm just like, like $7,000 a week. But he is just hardcore. Right. And he knows his audience and he knows his, right. you know. He's selling like high-end men's fashion. He seems to, thing. from what I gather, he has like a network of consigners who are finding things right. for him. Which is amazing. And then he's also always doing buying runs. Yeah, and, I mean... Yeah. 
compared to us and everybody's like, your store sucks because it's like you never source. And I'm like, we don't source very much. Right now. You know, right, right now. You know, we just haven't been. And and But that's the beauty of our store is that but we're stuff's still, still selling. Weird old stuff still selling. It's just a different It's still paying the bills. It's you a know? different model. Get out of here. Get out um, of your cat. You're so loud. So anyway, uh that's yeah. <laughs> that's the basics. our the basics. Opening. Get to statement. the basics. So Double E Films was asking us about online scavenging. Because a week ago we had said that we haven't had as much time to like spend a full day at an auction. or Right. So we've been doing more online scavenging. And he says, you don't have to give away your secrets, but are you buying these things from sellers on eBay with safe searches? Yeah. Or bidding at online auction house sites? Both. I feel like the trend is slowly moving towards online scavenging with auctioneers going online instead of in-person sales. And I just want to stay ahead of the game. Yeah. Even though I dislike the idea. Right. So I'll do a quick answer. It's both of those. Um, I have a lot of save searches on things that I like to buy in bulk. And then I lot them out. Yep. I'm sorry. I I don't lot them out. I I buy a lot. And then I sell stuff individually. It's random stuff. Yeah. Sometimes I can't find it for months. Yeah. I'm not going to say what it is. But um, it's not even interesting. But we, and, and also we'll find sellers who... Yeah. And this is a harder thing, trying to find sellers who do like estate auction sales yeah. online where... Like you can kind of tell that's what they're doing. It's like they're like house clean out people and then they sell the stuff online. So they're not auctioneers and they're not really estate sale right. people. They're, they're just, just like big eBayers. And they just want to sell like lots of stuff. So we just kind of keep an eye on the stuff they put up. And that's the thing we love is that if you can buy like a big lot of stuff because then your the shipping cost, you yeah, can... you can combine shipping. That. I yeah. mean... Again, it's not the best way in my mind to scavenge, but as other people have said, if you don't have the time to go out, right. it's it's doable. Well, and you can, I mean, the other thing about, you know, doing an online, uh, not an auction house, because we've talked, to, it's not necessarily an auction house. I mean, we've talked about those. There's some auction houses where you're like, oh, there's all this stuff and I got to go pick it up. And then you win one $5 item and you're like, I have to drive two hours to pick that up, you know? Right. Because they don't ship, whatever. So it's not like that. It's, it's more like, you know, looking for a seller. And I've done this with non-estate sale people where I see an item that I think is undervalued that I'm interested in. I look at their whole store and then I message them. I want these 10 items. Right. Um, can we do combined shipping and like make it work? Yeah, I think you know. the online auction. So we've we've had that happen where actually two auctions that we would go to in person. Yeah have stopped being in person and now just put their stuff online. online. I feel like they do themselves a disservice because I guess their thinking is, let's put everything online and we'll grow our audience. Yeah. And maybe they grow it a little bit, but it still has to be local people because they don't right. ch ship anything. I know. You're like, people still have it's to come It's not like this. someone in North Carolina can be bidding on these things unless they're willing to drive all you the know, way yeah, you know, six hours. hours or something. So I feel like, I don't know... If if that is if if auction houses are still thinking that that's a good deal or not, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, some auction houses do ship, but they they sell big weird things just like at an auction. And sometimes when you're like, oh, can you combine shipping on my whole box? And they're like, sure, that's you know eighty dollars to ship. And you're like, that right. what's this crazy? Right. I you think know, you're talking about that site. Uh, Oh, uh, everything but the house. Yeah, EB, is that, do EB, they still exist? EBTH.com. Yeah, yeah they're it's like, like this. they they were tough to buy from yeah. if you weren't just picking it up. We picked some things up in person, but yeah, it was a long drive. That's tough. Yeah, so I don't know. Here's my answer. It depends. <laughs> it's just selective. Like if yeah. you see something, you think it's a good deal. You think you can sell it for more. You bought it on eBay. Shipping was you know two bucks. Okay, no shipping's two bucks, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. Uh, the item's two bucks, shipping is, you know, five bucks. You're like, mm, I could turn that around for like fifty, sixty, a hundred dollars. Maybe this yeah. maybe, you know, this person's photos are horrible and if we take better pictures and put a better title on it and, and, and sit and on it. Sit on it. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens. It happened this week. There's some stuff that we bought last week that I'm like, Wow, I turned that around in less than a week and I made like fifty bucks and I yeah. bought it for a dollar. Yep. That was nice, yeah. It stuff like nice. that happens. So Thank you, Ryan. I just I just keep an eye out on stuff, yep. you know. 
But our, what we would rather do is if we had the time is to do in-person scavenging. It's much more efficient. It's much more profitable in our mind. It's just we're in that period of time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. sure. That's the best. Uh, Simplice, Simplicito, Simplicio. Up in Canada. Yep, he's on their forum. Uh, how do you say this? I love I love that like half the, the usernames, I'm like, I don't know how to say that. Yep. Um, <laughs> he was saying that he wanted to clarify. We had said we sold like a old Sony reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Yeah. And that we were patting ourselves on the back because we said it was untested. Untested, yes. Uh, but he wanted to clarify. Yes. If you don't say for parts or right. actually there's a choice, you know, for parts are broken, then you're not actually protected right. if of the course. person is so unhappy. So I – in here's the deal. Some categories don't have four parts. Mm. It's just newer used. Right. So I choose used. Electronics should have four parts, and I am adamant about doing four parts. Gotcha. Because if you don't, just like he said, even if it says untested in the title and in the description and in the item specific, blah, yeah. everywhere you can have it, they can be like, this didn't work. You're like, it's untested. So on that Sony for tape parts. player, it, it had been for parts? I mean, okay. we can pause and look, but I'm pretty... Because look, I, I buy electronics and I mm -hmm. buy things okay. on eBay, and I'm like... You know, if I'm buying a, an iPhone or whatever, I'm like, take out all for parts. I don't want anything for parts. I want right. it used. You know, you specify because you're like, I'm not buying this for parts. Gotcha. I'm buying it for a use. And for anyone who is a new and might not be understanding exactly what we're saying is that when you put something up on eBay, it, you can say it's new or used. used. Like, like not only in the title, it's an actual There's a drop, drop down, down menu. menu. And, and on on. In many categories, there is one where you can clearly say four parts broken. You know, it says four parts, which means this does not work. If you try and make it work, it will not work. Now, <laughs> I need to see what category it was listed in because with vintage electronics, they might not even have that. It might just be new or used or yeah. I'm pretty sure I put it in like a vintage electronics right. or vintage audio gear category yeah so it just depends on the category what do they allow right so of well, course he actually does two things we just talked about he actually seems to only buy on online auctions oh really and he buys mainly like industrial equipment oh that's right so he's so like he's an expert he's like it must say for parts yeah, or like, not you know <laughs> because you know he will sell things for yes. like a thousand dollars that's very heavy and ship it Yes. Across the country. It's a very good so thing to know. So you to be very know. careful. Yeah. And it's, it's super annoying. Like I was looking for, when we were buying our Apple Apple watches, um, when you you look at all the little like new, used, seller refurbished um, for parts. So if I'm like, okay, new, used, seller refurbished, great. There will be thousands of listings that are like, doesn't work. And you're like, cool, that should not be in the used. Yeah. And for someone who is to be in the for parts. brand new to eBay, it, you know, they may be asking why would someone buy something broken? But there's, for parts. There's actually, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Literally right. for parts. There's a market for something where people strip it like a radio or, yep. or they know how to fix it, you know? They know how to fix they're it. They're like, oh, this old watch, I can fix that thing, you know? This old espresso maker, I'll fix that. Yeah, right. So. Totally. Yep. Uh, okay. So this week, uh, I said was pretty good. We sold 39 things for $1,728. I love it. And 79 cents. Great. Um, the, it's nice thing for us is that because we sell the weird cheap stuff, we only paid about 85 bucks for all that stuff. I mean, yeah. that's the thing when right. we talk about our uh, numbers, like, yeah, we're not making, you know, we're not selling, you know, $5,000 of stuff, which would be nice. But we paid almost nothing But for we don't it. pay a lot for it. So that's just, you know, it's, it, again, we, we always call it, it's that scavenger equation, yep. you know? Yep, yep. Like, You'll see those people who say, oh, on Amazon, you know, I sold $30,000 of merchandise this month. But I spent twenty five on it. But, yeah, I spent, you know, $25,000 to uh, make that because, yeah. you know. Uh, so it's, again, figure out where y you want to be in that equation. Um, so the highest thing we sold was $150, a vintage jacket. Yes. A rawhide jacket. It was, right? it was a... 
What's rawhide compared to suede? Is that the same? Uh, I think suede is like softer. I think rawhide is like rawhide is like rough and tumble. I'm a cowboy. It was rawhide and it was fringe. There was fringe all over this thing. It was ridiculous. It was cool. Yeah. I sold it for $150. It's like, it's one of those things we bought for like a bucket. Where did we get that? At a junkie thrift store. I totally I'm telling you, we we bought it for like a dollar or two. A long time ago. A while ago, right? And I was like, I'm putting this up for $199. Right. Our store's on sale. I probably sent an offer. Right. 150 And I'm crossing my fingers. It does not get returned. Because it's no. like, it's one of those things where someone's going to be like, oh, it doesn't fit. fit. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> we sold like a little, we don't even know what kind of ethnic part of the world it's from. Like a little hat. I put it on the forum a, about a month ago being like, does anyone know where this is from? Because when I bought it, the person I bought it from at an estate sale was like, it's Tibetan. And I researched Tibetan, you know, formal wedding hat, cap, any, nothing. And nothing yeah. looked like that. I'm like, they're incorrect. Yeah. Um, so I just, people helped me kind of guess maybe the part of the world it was. I kind of guessed and it sold for 110 bucks 110 dollars no be it and i have another one yep that's identical and then we sold some L- and and these are just we, we always just pick out random things that i don't know it make me feel happy or were kind of high dollar for us mm-hmm. we sold these set of led lights so those like rope lights so weird 100 bucks the thing is is that these were like old you know they're, they're incandescent yeah. They're not LEDs. Oh, they're not LEDs. They're incan... Oh, incandescent this, rope. This is the weirdest sale. And the I don't know what these are for. They're they're rope lights, like Christmassy rope lights. They're white. They're incandescent. They're a two-foot extender. Huh. That They're this yeah. big. And I, I had eight of them. We got these in a box lot at an auction or something. Two of them didn't have a box. Sold those right away. The rest of them had boxes. They were brand new. And they had like the the brand and the um, UPC. So I was able to look it up on the original website. I'm like, these things cost like, you know, $20, $25 each. Right. And I bought, I sold six of them. So it was a hundred and something dollars. I have no idea what people are using. They're incandescent. I'm like, people still use those? But it's a nice sale because it was a hundred bucks, but also because it was like, yeah, again, on a table where... Just... I was buying something was else, came with it, bonus. Yeah, that was and a good And then the final thing is we sold some ceramic plates. I don't know what you call it, China. Oh, my God. It is. It's China. It's Fitz porcelain. And, Fitz and Floyd. I have had those plates <laughs> for literally my entire life. No, I'm just kidding. But like five, six years. It was a stack of them. We sold them for 40 bucks, And it's 50, nice. They were $50. $50. Bucks. Bucks. And it's nice because now... There's a part of our shelf that is now empty. This is the thing that kills me. It's like, what is it? It's like a lot of eight or ten. It's so annoying to yep. pack. But this person gives us a gives us an offer, fifty dollars. I'm thrilled. I'm like, yes, they're really cute. They're a high end brand. Whatever. They will not pay. They will not pay. They will not pay. Open unpaid item case. I think it was like the last day of the unpaid item. They pay, yes. and they're like. Please pack these extra well. I'm like, took you long enough to pay or even say anything to me. It's so, people are so weird. Yep. And anyway. we were actually talking about that on the it's forum. Someone started, I forgot who it was, started a conversation of like, you know, he was getting upset because people were canceling all yes, week. so annoying. Flaky buyers. And he was like, yeah, flaky. what do you do? You right. know, do you just go ahead and cancel or do you allow the eBay unpaid item assistant to, to work its way through and make sure the buyer has a black mark? And, you know, a lot of smart scavengers were saying, sellers were saying, you know, just be a robot, cancel yeah. it immediately, put it up immediately and sell it again. You know, the longer it you take going through that process, your item is being held up. I will say we sometimes are of the opinion of if someone really does feel flaky and has wasted your time to you allow the unpaid item assistant yeah. take over because what what happens is the buyer will get a black mark a, yeah a strike a strike an unpaid them. item strike right 
And then if you're a seller, and you can actually set in at your store, don't let someone that has two unpaid item strikes. That's the that's the minimum. You buy something do. from my store within six months. So yeah. if they have two of those unpaid item strikes in six months, yeah. So last week, right. this is this is an example. Someone wanted to buy that Tibetan hat, right? Um, or Tibetan in quotes, and he was like, um, "I'm trying to make an offer on this." But it says since I have two unpaid item strikes, I can't. And I was like, yep. Yep. <laughs> well, actually, I was like, I, I, I was actually considerate a little bit. I was like, okay, well, tell me what your offer is and I'll yeah. consider it. I'll consider it. Because you can put them on an excluded list or included list where you're like, I can, right. I'm allowing this person because they've contacted me to, to make an offer or buy this. And he gave me a super low offer and I was like, nope. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like you wouldn't pay for it anyway. So what what happens is is um, you know they have to ask permission to buy, and so right. you're making them kind of jump through some hoops, and you can make exceptions, and yeah. hopefully that kind of says like, oh, I better pay for this, pay for yeah. things. Now I will say, a buyer can can cancel an item on their own. They can request right. to cancel request it. Request to cancel, right. which is weird. Right, and like, so so if they make an official request, we always cancel. Yeah, so it, it, real quick, sorry, and then I'll be done. It, it's just when people are being flaky and not, talking. and then they just send you a, a just. A, a message that that says, "Oh, I don't really want it. Please cancel it." And they're wanting us to do all the work. Then we're like, "Ah, oh, maybe not." Right. So there's two different things. It's tough when someone buys something and they message you and they're like, oh my God, I'm totally right. a mistake. You're like, at least they contacted you. It sucks. No doubt. I have, I've been looking at my sales the last few weeks and I'm like, oh, there's a cancel, cancel, cancel. It's like, there's so many people. It's ridiculous. But you're like, at least they messaged. So you're like, I want to sell this thing. Get it back up. There are times where it's like... <laughs> Offers back and forth. Offers back and forth. Finally, you're like, okay, I'm taking that offer. And they're like, yeah, I, I, I found this for cheaper. Yeah. You're like, no <laughs> way, dude. Unpaid item cake. Like, there's there's certainly right. situations it's like where you're only, just like, uh-uh. It's the only power we have. And supposedly, I mean, eBay obviously doesn't publish this, like, how many unpaid items <laughs> a buyer can have. But supposedly it says in their on their site that if you have too many of them, they could suspend your buying privileges. Right. So I it could you know, be. So if someone is truly flaky. So again, it's just, but then it's like one of those things like that lady with the plates, it's like, doesn't pay, doesn't pay. I message her. I message her. I'm like, we're going away for the holidays soon. I really want to like get these out. Doesn't respond. Finally pays. Please pack these really well. You're just like, you know, hey. you never know, man. Those are times that I'm just grateful. Like, just, thank you yeah. for paying. We will yeah. pack it well. Have a good holiday. Yep. Um, so customer issues, we didn't, I mean, we just kind of talked about I mean, all this. I mean, other than minimal. some people, we haven't had an unpaid item in a little while. That was, which a, is nice. yeah, exactly. It's it's shocking. But so far, people have been good. Mm, pretty good. Seems like everyone's in the holiday kind yeah. of buying spirit, you know. Yeah, it's, it's been, good. It's been fine. Uh, okay, so let's go to the questions that people sent in. So you can comments. email us an audio file. Our email is the scavengerlife at gmail.com, or you can call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540 407 8486. You have three minutes to leave a message. Hi, Jay and Ryan. It's Nancy calling again from Atlanta, Georgia. I called in a couple of weeks ago regarding uh, helping set up my sister. Uh, to sell on eBay and global shipping not being an option for her. Um, and I just wanted to follow up. She is not in managed payments. Um, I thought that when we set her up, it was going to require that she go that route, but it did not require that. And she is being paid uh, into her PayPal account. But, um, again, global shipping is not an option for her. And I just wanted to follow up with that little uh, caveat. She is not in global, uh, managed payments. But 
um, still does not have the option to ship global shipping. Thanks to you. Okay, so your original call like sparked all these conspiracy theories, mainly by me, um, because I'm like, are they shutting it down? Manage payments, blah, blah, blah. Um, but what I also think is if she's just not in managed payments and she's just doing PayPal, that maybe because she's a new seller, they don't allow you to just be like, global shipping, I'll ship anywhere. They're like, you got to sell, you know, a hundred things before you can even apply for global so shipping. Did, so did this is woman say that she tried to turn it on? Because I think you have to opt into global shipping, right? I'm assuming that's yeah. what, I'm assuming she like looked through her stuff and was like, yeah. Um, so maybe it's just a wacky thing with new users, you yeah. know, and maybe, I don't know. I, yeah. who knows? I mean, I think the bigger, the bigger th- question that has sparked a lot of conversations that eBay started this thing called eBay send, right? Which is like a kind of a streamline international yeah. shipping. So you're not doing it through the global shipping program where you ship it to the Kentucky warehouse and then right. eBay sends it. It's you shipping it from home through the post office, but they like make it more transparent. They make sure there's tracking. So is that somehow? So are, so is eBay trying to make an alternative right. that's going to be parallel at the same time as global shipping program, or are they starting a new program and then they will end global shipping program? We don't and know. And just be like, people go for it. Yeah, we we, we don't know. We don't know. But thanks for that clarification. That's actually really helpful when people are like, just to clarify, this, that, and the other thing. And we're like, oh, okay, right, got it. Good morning, Scavenger Life. My name is David from eBay's The Connex 42 store, longtime listener. And the reason I'm calling is I have a uh, question that I don't know how to handle. I've been, I follow a lot of YouTubers about reselling. And I've seen a couple YouTubers, without mentioning names, saying that they're able to list 100 pairs of jeans in a day, quote-unquote, no problem. I can't figure out how that's done from start to finish. Uh, you know, a simple thing like patches, it'll take my wife and I, an eight-hour eight period, we can probably do about 50. Yeah, that's research, that's uh, cataloging, inventorying, that's the whole thing. And I just don't so – what I don't know what I'm missing. So if you could help me out there and uh, help possibly some other people out, tell us how that's done. I, I just don't get it. Uh, thanks for your uh, – all, all the stuff you put out there, and uh, I'm grateful. Yeah, I've learned a lot from you guys, uh, as, as well as uh, – Craigslist Hunter and Terminal 99. Shout out to those guys, too. So thank you very much, and uh, happy holidays. Looking forward to hearing from you. Bye. Okay, so what he's saying is there are some YouTubers who are like, yeah, we listed 100 pairs of jeans yesterday. No biggie. So how? Yeah, I mean, so number one, I agree. Terminal 99 and Craigslist Hunter are both two really good channels. Uh, I fully support those guys. Yeah, they're, they're great. They're uh, you they're know, real. They're for real, I mean, real, they're real. just like, you know, and they have enough history in their channel where if you see, like, it's not fly by night. They're kind of like just, they seem to be, you know. Uh, anyway, um, so this is from us. We're like the turtles, of the online side world. <laughs> we're slow and steady. We're here. We're not going away. We're doing it. We're not getting rich. We're paying our bills. We wake up without alarm clocks. That's kind of our thing. Yes. Um, I don't know, but let me make a guess. Okay. Why not? Let's just I can, I can make a guess. So I'm thinking that they probably use one of those third-party softwares, mm-hmm. like 6-Bit. Mm-hmm. And then they have um, a template and so, and they, maybe they hire someone to help them and that they are just going through and maybe they're even being smart and they're making piles of similar sizes. Like Levi's. These are all the men's Levi's or, size 40. Right. You know, so they're trying to get everything as organized as possible. And then they're just going through and doing a template and they're just changing photos or... And with jeans, I mean, you can get away with three to five photos like you're just like boom 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 yeah. done because you know? because i've heard that where people are like i list you know 500 postcards in a day or you know if you can find items that are really similar and you don't need to change a whole lot 
then if you have those templates, then you can go real fast. And the difference between commodity items like jeans, unless they're like a million different designer, you're like, they're buying, you know, it's Levi's, it's blah, blah, blah. You right. know, like it's, these are the brands. Like if they're a commodity clothing seller, they're just like, you know, we're whipping through yeah. this. If you're buying vintage patches or whatever, and every single one, and you have 50 to 100, right. and every single one is different, each one measures different, right. uh, they all came from different places, they go in different categories, yeah. like, and plus I, that's like a whole And plus I thing. wonder how long a day is. I mean, right. for us, our helper is working three or four hours a day right. and gets through, what, 20, 30 things or something? I it mean, depends. Yeah, it, sure. It, it it yeah. depends, but you exactly. know, it would if if you're working eight, ten hours a day. I don't know. Right, like you um, through hundred jeans. Are there two of you working? Like, what's her name in Chicago? Who sells clothes? amazing taste? Amazing taste. Like she's one of these people who is just a machine. She yeah. talks about she like she'll like wake up at three a.m. and just before the kids are up, she's like you know putting she's up sixty it. items in three hours. You know, it's. Yeah, I right, and so and so it's interesting when a YouTuber, I don't know who it is, what their situation yeah. is, and they're like, "Oh, I put a hundred uh, jeans up," and you're like, "Do you have two employees?" Like, okay. uh, you know, I also I wonder too. I mean, we've done this before, which I guess is, isn't great, but like where you, you know, do something one time, like something really cool, <laughs> but that's not really. You're like, typical. I don't do that every like, day. Like maybe we'll be real proud of ourselves, but I don't mean to like. Make you know, that like, be like that's our everyday right kind of exactly thing. like there have been times where when I have a helper right. and I have a hundred scheduled listings I'm right. like yeah I listed a hundred things today I didn't have to take photos of any of the like someone right. else did that work but I sat here and made sure the prices were good you know yeah. so yeah that's that's a different workflow I mean, yeah so I don't know I mean like if the question is how do I do a hundred items right. we would not be the people to ask right. ask the people that yeah. are. Uh, bragging about that and see if they'll share their process. Yeah. I'd love to hear how right. they do it. Yeah, totally. I, I would too. So, uh, all right. That's it for today. Can you believe it? Yeah. Great. I'm, I'm hungry. I'm going to make a piece of fish. I have been I'm making rice while we've been sitting here. Do we, Some artichoke hearts. And this, so is this the, what did you cook I'm this so week? I'm so hungry. <laughs> what did you, well, we bought an air fryer. That's right. Um, small one. You we know. bought the smallest one you could at Walmart. It's thirty dollars. Because I was like, I'm not going to buy a big thing that's going to take up all this room on my counter if I don't even use it. I I cook like two meals a day in the air fryer. I'm yeah. obsessed with it. I love it. It's nice because when you want to roast something, you, it, we don't have to turn on our big oven just yeah. to do something small. So it's just nice. Air fryer rocks. Uh, okay. You can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com. That's where we all are. And when I say about the a forum, that's where it is. Uh, you can call and leave a question or comment on our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Do you think we're going to be 60 and still doing this podcast every Sunday, Monday? I have no idea. Wow. Maybe. What if we are? Like, that'd be when, so hardcore. I always think, I always think, like, at what number are we going to end and be like, yeah. we're done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. This is it. We're like, done. Like, like this is it. This yeah. is not it. We're just, we're just <laughs> discussing openly here. But we do post an episode every a Monday and have for yep. a while now. Uh, on Wednesday, Steve, our friend Steve, he will do the what sold for his store. Yes, um, so and that goes out on a Wednesdays. Um, and do you want to say anything about shampoo and booze? Ashley is editing an episode today. So I will get a shampoo and booze up. We talk about Airbnb and short-term rentals. We've been making videos about design critiques and listing critiques. We're very kind. We want you to be the best Airbnb short-term rental person you possibly can. So we yeah. are super excited about it. Shampooandbooze.com or it's youtube.com slash shampoo and booze. Right. And it's called that because those are two things that people will sometimes leave behind. And we've... Find them all the time. It's yeah. great. Quirky. Quirky. Uh, and you can subscribe to us through either a podcast feed in your favorite podcast uh, on a YouTube and now on... On Google. It's Google Podcasts and Spotify. Spotify. That's we are on Spotify. We're on iTunes. Yep. 
Um, we're on YouTube. Yep. We're so everywhere. We're, you know, if you're driving a Tesla. You, oh, Tesla has Spotify YouTube, now. You That's can right. now subscribe to us. Hello to all the Tesla owners. <laughs> I'm so jealous of you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you. Uh, this is done. We're, we're this just is finished. Done. We're ending in just, three, two, one. Don't you want to sell trash and be free, Jay? Why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Bye.